Okay, and our last speaker for the day, but definitely not least, Ken Casey <laughs> from Texas A&M. <coughs> I think. That's not on the first slide. Not, huh? Not on the first slide. Oh, we're not. Okay, hang on. That's why. Sorry. So. <coughs> It's uh, <laughs> perhaps, well, perhaps uh, 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 we shouldn't have done these together uh, because you're going to see a lot of the same stuff so therefore I'm going to go f through this fairly quickly. Um, I've been um, involved in, tr in measuring nitrous oxide, scratching my head trying to figure out what's going on for about the last six or seven years. We started at a dairy and then since, pri uh, since then have mainly done feed yard measurements using the, um, uh, uh, the, the non-flow through chambers uh, with the idea of basically trying to figure out what's going on, whether there is some sort of mechanism that we can uh, quantify with the idea of uh, being able to model it more effectively. Um, emissions of nitrous oxide uh, or emissions of greenhouse gases from uh, feed yards are basically dominated by the enterics. Um, but from the manure management um, uh, side of the feed yards, um, uh, it, while the mass uh, of um, methane is higher than the mass of nitrous oxide because of its higher global warming potential, it's actually the largest contributor to that from the, um, from the manure management system. Um, so we, we set out with a... Um, uh, an objective to um, uh, to try and e uh, examine the uh, the magnitude, the spatial and temporal variability of those emissions um, from manure management systems that exist at feed yards, basically in the in the high, Texas High Plains or the Southern Great Plains, which are basically where all the feed yards are, and the um, the factors that um, are in the IPCC handbooks, as um, uh, others have discussed. Um, one, are, are considerably dated, and two, were, were not necessarily derived under uh, the conditions that exist there. Um, hello. These non-flow through chambers are, have been used extensively. The, uh, most of the, uh, the measurements of what comes from uh, cropping systems have been done with them. They're the mo uh, they are the most common method in, in the literature of measuring greenhouse gases from soil type surfaces. Um, so uh, use those. Um, we standard. We followed this. Uh, the gra basically the GraySnap protocol as well as. Um, could be uh, followed in a feed yard, um, standardised on a time. We use ten chambers within one feed yard pen. Typically a pen um, in our re region is about 180, 190 feet long and about 80 feet wide. Um, uh, that, um, so at uh, roughly 150 square feet per animal, 100 animals in that pen. Um, we obtained a pen that had been just vacated, the animals had just uh, been shipped. So as close as you could get to the, uh, to the conditions in the pen um, as, to, to, as to actually having animals there. You can't take these measurements while animals are there. Um, they're going to be all over you. They're going to uh, be trying to eat your equipment or, your, or they're going to injure themselves on the equipment. So it's, it's a compromise um, in that it's not, um, it's not truly the conditions that, uh, with the animals there, but you can't have the animals there. Um, and we, we ran it for a week, which is about as long as you could get, the, and get a feed yard to give you an empty pen. <laughs> um, uh, Heidi talked about how difficult it is to, to install these um, chamber bases, like you're, you're trying to do it in a manner that um, uh, that uh, makes an accurate representation of the emission fluxes without, uh, uh, um, while allowing you to make these measurements, you have to uh, 
um, basically force those um, uh, bases into, the, into that uh, fairly hard manure pack um, uh, and it requires some considerable force to do that under, under the general dry conditions that exist. Uh, we've, uh, in the end, standardised on using a 30 pound um, uh, slide hammer to drive the mill, and it's, it, it's wearing. Um, poor Chambers. Typical, uh, typical dry weather conditions in the feed yard in Texas. Um, you can see the um, uh, see the, um, the chambers lined up. Uh, we uh, lay them out roughly like that in, in the feed yard, two rows of five, um, uh, ten chambers within the pen. Um, we can uh, we use a 30 minute observation period with four measurements over that time. So zero, 10 minutes, 20 minutes and 30 minutes. So the, uh, the, cha uh, the chambers, uh, chamber tops are actually on for 30 minutes. We, uh, we can make those 10 measurements in 40 minutes. So uh, at time zero, you put the top on um, uh, on chamber one. You have one minute to get to chamber two, put the top on that. By the time you've done, uh, done chamber 10, it, you, uh, you're back measuring to chamber one. So um, while these uh, uh, a downside of these techniques is that it is a very labour intensive technique and it's got follow up analytical requirements. But when you compare it to um, uh, some of these fast analyzers um, and the Los Gatos analyzer that David Parker has is, is faster than some of the other ones. So you're going to be able to make a measurement in a shorter period of time. But I've tried this uh, uh, technique against uh, a gas mat analyzer and we're taking one measurement in, uh, in a, a cropping scenario, taking one measurement every 10 minutes, I can take four measurements um, in 40 minutes so that it, it worked out to be the same thing. Now, this comes to the uh, to the to the pseudo topic of this uh, of this talk, spatial variability. This is about when we started uh, making these measurements. This is an uh, aerial view from Google Earth of one of the feed yards that we um, um, made the measurements in. Very dry conditions, very uniform looking pens. Um, these pens have. Uh, these are their feed alleys, cattle alleys for removing the cattle from the pens. There is a, a feed bunk, there's a concrete apron inside the pen. Um, there is a water point. Oh, sorry, there's the water point there, shared between two pens. Um, there's about a two to three percent slope that way. There's a small, uh, about the same slope coming back the other way. There is a drain um, coming down the length of the pens there. You can't see any of that, it just looks flat. And in the previous photograph you could see lots of um, dry, fluffy manure. So what sort of spatial variability do you expect within there? Where do you expect the high points for uh, nitrous oxide or, uh, or methane to be? Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> after, after six years at it, <laughs> your guess would be as good as mine. Um, this is uh, uh, the next um, available image, and it, show, it shows a few other things. Sh oh, sorry. Shows the, um, uh, uh, the feed apron uh, in a clean pen. Um, this is the uh, apron around the, the water point. Um, and these pens are clean. Uh, the, at this stage, uh, atypically, we have a, a group of empty pens. Um, and you can uh, see most of these pens have been cleaned. This particular feed yard cleans twice a year, whereas most feed yards in Texas would clean once a year. Um, they will um, uh, come in and uh, um, 
scrape manure and they'll build, and build mounds, but they won't remove it from the pen, from the pen more than once a year. And this yard yeah, does it twice a year. You, you can actually see where they have formed small mounds and remove them um, uh, there without actually cleaning the, fully cleaning the yard. Um, and in this image, you can actually see the, uh, the in, two, in 2011, it didn't rain very much at all. 2015, we've had a bit more rain, and you can see here, there's been a rainfall event probably in the last week, um, and you can see uh, water puddles uh, along that drainage line that I was talking about. So within, the, within the, uh, the pen, there are going to be areas which are going to be more moist, uh, uh, with potentially uh, greater depths of manure, um, greater deposition rates of, uh, uh, of nitrogen as faeces and urine. Um, and there are going, uh, so there are areas probably uh, close to the feed bunk where you'd expect ho uh, high deposition rates around the, uh, the water points. Um, whereas at the other areas of the pen, which, uh, of the pen, which you would expect lower deposition rates. Uh, basically, the, um, the, uh, the samples you collect, you bring back to the lab and you run on a GC. Um, of those time series measurements, you um, uh, fit a curve through the, uh, the concentrations and by a bit of uh, calculation you come up with a flux. So what sort of concentrations do we measure? Um, I work with uh, a number of um, uh, cropping scientists doing measurements from, um, from crops uh, and from pastures and you can see that uh, most of their measurements are below about one and a half parts, uh, parts per million nitrous oxide. Um, for feed yards, below 500 parts per million nitrous oxide. So, um, the range that we get is mu uh, uh, of fluxes is much higher. The, um, but the most common flux is, is low. If I was just doing this work, I'd have the, uh, the, uh, the GC set up differently and my um, uh, minimum detectable level would be lower. If I, if, I, if I set things up to just handle one and a half parts per million as my maximum, my minimum detectable quantity would be lower. If I tried running this on a, a, a GC I'd optimise for doing that, the detectors would be swamped. Um, if you remember the, the graph that Heidi put up of the two peaks, when we first started, we were fortunate to have a week where on day one, we, and, these, and, the, and during this study we were taking four measurements a day, virtually no emissions of, uh, of nitrous oxide on day one. On the evening of, uh, of day one, we got 37 millimetres of rainfall. So on day two, we have this massive spike. And by the end of the, uh, of the week, we're back to almost baseline again. So mirroring that, uh, that spike that we saw in the lab. We weren't, uh, you, you couldn't occupy a, a, a cat, uh, pen at a, a commercial cattle feed lab long enough to find out whether there is that second um, peak. And in reality, does that peak exist in the real world? Because the, uh, you, have taken away the hundred animals that are standing in that pen uh, uh, urinating and defecating and uh, spilling water and feed. Um, so is the, uh, the actual um, uh, combination of uh, emission events that are happening still the same once you've taken the animals away? 
the, um, this is um, a re recorded response to temperature. So of those four measurements within, within the day, um, we have increasing manure pack temperature, we have um, increasing emissions. Now, spatial variability of our, our uh, and I could, I could stand here all afternoon and put up charts like that of every pen I've tested. I'll just, um, I'll be uh, mindful of my, uh, of my imposition upon my audience and just put up two. So this is nitrous oxide for one pen. There was not, uh, in the numbers, there was not a substantial variation uh, within, was not a, uh, an extraordinary variation within the pen. But we can see, this is the front of the pen, um, uh, the feed bunk, the, this was probably the water point here. Um, so for nitrous oxide, we have a, uh, uh, obviously a high point here. This is fitted off the, off the 10 measurements, five down here and five over here. Uh, so we had, a, a and we had a high point for nitrous oxide near the water point. We have one in the back there. Um, why there's one in the back, I don't know. But uh, this was 2011 data, very dry conditions. Uh, there would not have been a rainfall event that would have caused water in the, um, in the, um, in the drain. Um, methane. Does that line up with, it, with your understanding of the processes that, um, uh, that are producing these, these gases? So, so a summary of... Uh, we have high spatial variability of our results. <coughs> I could have put up one of those where the, my average was about, uh, w let's say, was one um, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for those pens. I, ha I have a, a week where uh, my average was probably one, but I had one uh, chamber which was 120 and stayed uh, above 50 all week. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a, 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 meth, a method error, it wasn't a measurement error. It was a true outlier and there was something happening. Um, so highly spatiable, spatially variable, temporal variation. It's a big response to rainfall events. The response is actually quite fast for such a system and it poses significant challenges in trying to understand and analyze the data. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions for Ken? So with those last uh, slides, the variability method, you have environmental variability, but you also have, you're getting the nitrogen from the urine and the, the methane, the carbon from the feces. Yeah. And, and so there's a, obviously, I'm guessing that there's a distribution effect there also. Yes. The, we, we have the, the physical um, features of the pen. We have the, and the cattle behavior within the pen. Um, and then probably we have things that we don't, we don't actually see within the pen. Within the, within the pen, there, there, is certain, there are certainly differences in the thickness of manure, and we do, we do ta uh, make observations on um, pen manure thickness. Um, we uh, we now take extensive core samples and analyse for uh, for uh, nutrients and bulk density and different other parameters, and. Um, we just seem to be increasing the number of things we have to try and collect to try and explain what's going on. Is there any correlation in moisture to the, to the high spots, the biology is releasing it? I'd pass that one on to Heidi. Um, the, the, yeah, uh, cer uh, certainly um, with more, uh, more uh, obviously moisture is, uh, um, is going to be, um, 
is going to uh, be more strongly linked to the methane than it is to, be, uh, to, uh, to the nitrous oxide. Water, but it wasn't as strong as you would anticipate. But overall, these manures are all pretty dry, and so we're, we're talking about a very narrow range. It's not like we're talking 20% versus 90% water content. They're all about 78%, so it's very small variation. Okay, so with that, I'd like to thank all of our speakers.